Grand Performance USA, the greatest entertainers in America, is requested by you, the men and women in the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command Performance, presented this week and every week, till you're home from the hospital and back from over there. Hello, gang. This is High Aberback bringing on another Command Performance. Yes, sir, 30 minutes full of the stuff and gov boarded in your letters, care of Armed Forces Radio, Hollywood 28, USA. And here to take care of the mail is that distinguished man of letters. He's quite a hand with a male, and quite a hand with a female. It's the old Professor K. Kaiser! Evening, folks. Hi, y'all. Oh, boy, my girl took me to a wild of a fashion show. Say, hi, you should see the bathing suit that model was wearing. Now, what was it, Kay? The uh, French type? Yeah, it was made out of two handkerchiefs. Two handkerchiefs? Yeah, so I hung around all day just hoping. <laughs> hoping? Hoping for what? Hoping she'd catch cold. Two said, Mother, I'm just an old rake tonight. Yeah. Okay. Let's <laughs> uh, What's new in dresses? Well, one girl was wearing a shocking outfit. It was one of those polka dot creations. Uh, really? What kind of cloth? Huh? I said, what kind of cloth? Oh, no cloth, just polka dot. Oh, <laughs> uh, now, folks, let's tend to some more of the mail and open up the music department. We've got a sweet young gal here who does some mighty nice things with her vocal cords. She's another one of those talented Paul Whiteman graduates, your radio favorite, lovely Eileen Wood. Eileen. Hello, everyone. Eileen, what have you lined up for the gang? Well, uh, Private First Class Tom Holbrook's favorite song, Somebody Loves Me. Well, now I'll bet we all will. <laughs> Let's hear it, Gail. Somebody loves me. I wonder who. I wonder who he can be. Somebody loves me, I wish I knew who he can be for it's me. For every boy who passes me, I shout, hey, maybe you were meant to be my loving baby. Somebody loves me. the stage long enough. Let's bring on a glamour gal to help us steer through the rest of the show. Uh, who's that, Kay? Well, it's Private Jerry Krause's favorite movie star. Jerry says her face is pretty as a picture, but what I go for is the frame. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo! 
And here she is, the lovely Marsha Hunt. Marsha! Thanks a lot. Oh, Hi, Mar- gang. Oh, Marsha. Marsha, you lovely creature. Come into my arms. Let me hug you, Marsha. Oh, I like to squash you, Marsha. <laughs> Again? Uh, you're so exciting. I, 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 I. Oh, calm down, calm down. You shouldn't get so excited about me. Remember, Kay, woman. Woman is just a rag, a bone, and a hank of hair. <laughs> you know what? What? I love that kind of junk. <laughs> Marsha, let's step backstage into the rehearsal room, and I'll mix you my special drink. Special drink? Yeah. I pour in a pony of scotch, Mm -hmm. a couple ponies of vodka, Mm -hmm. a few ponies of cognac, Uh six or eight ponies of rum. Mm, Now, what does all that lead up to? Oh, just a little horsing around. (laughs) Uh, What do you say? You men get me tired, always thinking of necking. That's all you ever think of. Women, necking, women. It's it's an obsession. (laughs) What's funny? Uh, Magnificent obsession. (laughs) Hey, don't, don't hold back, gal. I'm your kind of man. I'm strong and I'm virile, gal. <laughs> strong? Sure. Why, Kay Carter, you are so weak, you couldn't lift an olive. Is that so? Yeah, that's so. With or without a pimento? <laughs> Honey, you'd have fun with me. I've been around. And gals always go for a man who's been around. I know, Kay, but you've been around so long. <laughs> Okay, what's the next order of business? Well, Marsha, it's time to give out with the super special command performance of the week. Oh, yes. Uh, can we have a little theme music, please? <laughs> Tonight's letter is from Seaman First Class Edmund Hibbler, who's off touring the Blue Pacific. Yep, Edmund's a great football fan, and he misses the cheering Saturday afternoon throngs at the old stadium. He says, won't you please let me hear that fine, tingling sound of a crowd going crazy as their hero crashes over the line for a touchdown. Well, Edmund, we aren't going to give you just the sound of one crowd. We're going to drop in now on several of the biggest stadiums. We take you now to the Cotton Bowl. And now a night game at the Sugar Bowl. A night game at the Rose Bowl. And now a very exciting game at the Hollywood Bowl. Oh, Melvin, you monster! <laughs> Wonderful, Kay. Now, Edmund, we don't want to toss off your letter so briefly. In your honor, we've asked in the well-known football expert, inventor of the T formation, Mr. Merwin Bowles. Buck that line, hold that ball, wash your hands, block that kick, snag that fumble, tote that barge, grab that fly. He's got fair ball. a great football player? You invented the T-formation? You know all about sports? I thank you. Oh. <laughs> oh, Ish, go home. Now, now, wait a second, Kay. That's no way to talk to Ish. I... I think he's cute. Goodness, Miss Hunt, uh, you're pretty forward. Oh. Oh, well, I, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. You're pretty backwards, too. <laughs> Ish. Now cut it out, Ish. What's your language? Huh? What's your language? English. What's yours? Oh. <laughs> oh, I love this boy. Ish. Ish. Come closer. Uh, what for? Oh, Ish. We're out west, where men are men and women are women. That's funny. 
What? You know, it's practically the same back east. <laughs> oh, Marsha, you'll have to forget, uh, forgive Ishka. Well, this kid doesn't even know about the birds and the bees. Oh, I exploded. I exploded that there theory. Professor, don't you believe a word about them there birds and bees. Why not, Ish? Once I put a bee in a bird cage and waited for two weeks and nothing happened. <laughs> All right, all right. Let's get back to football. East? Oh, who did you play football with? William and Mary. That's my school, William and Mary. Oh, quiet, William and Mary. I bet you don't even know what William and Mary's colors are. I don't know what William's are, but Mary's are pink with little blue ruffles around the edge. <laughs> Stop it, will you? Well, I'm one of the greatest players that ever played. You know, once I was tackled by the whole football team from that there college in New Haven. Yale? Yale, I screamed bloody murder. <laughs> oh, I knew it. I, I knew you knew nothing about football. Is that so? Just listen here to now. Just listen to this. Oh, Hollywood, 2161. Hike. Granite, 3581. Hike. Sycamore, 3058. Hike. Crestview, 2471. Oh, Hike. oh, cut it out, Ace. Those aren't football signals. Those are telephone numbers. I know it, and if a girl answers, I'm going to hike over and make some passes. <laughs> And now here are the crew chiefs back again with a song oh, for... Mar oh, Marcia. A song for Sergeant Pete McClary. Say, hey, Marcia. It's their own a fine arrangement. Hey, hold it just a minute, kid. What is this? You were willing to talk to Ishka Bibble? Are you too proud to talk to me? Of course not, Kay. Why, I'm willing to talk to any man, whether he's a doddering old fossil or a squirt. Well, what about me? Kay, I don't want folks. <laughs> Well, that's better. Sing it, kids. Go ahead. I never knew I could love anybody, baby, like I'm loving you. I could not realize what a pain. prefer guys like Ishka Bibble and High Averback to me. Why is that? Well, Kay, they're professional people. Ish knows about football, and 
Pie knows about radio. Well, I'm a professional, too. I've been studying hard, and, and I'm now the world's newest type of doctor. The newest type? Whatever do you mean? Uh, we'll show you, Marcia, as we now present a drama of the modern medical world entitled Medicine Marches On, or... <laughs> Don't put dynamite in the patient's skull. You want to blow his top? At the Kaiser Clinic, there is tension in the air. Young Dr. Kaiser bends over his operating table. Ready, nurse? Scalpel? Scalpel. Alcohol? Alcohol. Sponge? Sponge. Alcohol? Alcohol. Suture? Suture. Alcohol? Alcohol. Doctor, there's a crowd of patients waiting outside to see you. Oh, uh, humanity must be served. Nurse, it makes me happy to see people suffering because I know I can help them. I'm a great doctor. I'm a great doctor dedicated to the principles of medical ethics. I must see these people and alleviate their terrible suffering. But first, there's just one thing. Yes, doctor. Yes, Nick. Nick? But, doctor... What if my mother should come in? She comes in, I'll neck her, too. <laughs> Who's this? Oh, it, it's your first patient, Doctor. Hey, Doctor, what do you know about liver trouble? I don't know, Ace. What do you know about liver trouble? Well, I fry the onions in glue so they won't slide off. <laughs> J.G. <laughs> now, Mr. Kaiser, are you a legitimate doctor? Legitimate? Eesh, look at all the degrees I've got up on the wall. But, Doc, all you got up there is a thermometer. That's right. On that one wall alone, I've got 72 degrees. <laughs> I'll tell you, I heard you're not so good. Didn't you operate on a patient who jumped off the table before he could sew him up? Before I could sew him up? What makes you think so? I just seen him running around without a stitch. <laughs> and they tell me you're a specialist. Specialist? Why, right. I specialize in the treatment of diseases caused by listening to radio commercials. That's wonderful, Professor. You're my man. Why? What's your trouble? Well, I can't. I've tried it, but I can't do it. I can't do it. I tell you, I can't do it. You can't do what? I can't pass the fingernail test. <laughs> oh. oh, this is terrible. You've tried running your fingers over your scalp? Yeah. Uh-huh. And what happened? My fingernails drop off. <laughs> Professor, what should I do? Just a second. Let me look into my medical textbook. Ah, here we are. Page 76, out of the evening post. <laughs> uh -huh. For your scalp, we'll have to use the Lucky Tiger treatment. Lucky Tiger? Yes, indeed. Now, if you'll just step through this door here. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Lucky Tiger. <laughs> I hate to say this, but isn't that a little dangerous? That's right. Nurse, that man may be killed. Oh, what have I done? i got to run out and get some help. i got to hurry. But first, just one thing. What's that, Dr. Darling? Yes, Nick. <laughs> Please, doctor. Here's your next patient. Uh, uh, doctor, doctor, doctor. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, doctor, my goodness... Why you're, why, you're looking manlier and huskier than you have ever looked before. Wait a minute. That's my nurse. This is me behind the umbrella stand. <laughs> oh, behind the umbrella stand? Yes. Oh, for goodness sakes. Well, uh, how do you look when you're open? <laughs> no, uh, Doctor, uh, can you help me, Dr. Fram? 
Uh, my life has been miserable since you treated me. How so? Well, people used to point at me and... Uh, well, they didn't exactly. Yes, they did, too. And uh, they'd whisper, uh, there goes Ursula Twing. And they'd say, he's only half safe. I see. And now? <laughs> well, they say I'm utterly dangerous. Well, is that all? Well, I, it, it sounded like it was, yes. Yes. Well, what I mean is, uh, a few months ago, my, my best friends wouldn't tell me. No, they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't get, tell me at all. But now... Yes, now... Everybody does. <laughs> they flab it right back in my face, and I spend all my money on Kleenex. <laughs> That's nothing to sneeze at, and it's a very... That's a yeah, very... Just, just read what's written on the paper. <laughs> well, really, this is a very baffling case. Uh, uh, yes, tell me, Ursula, you... have you tried Life Boy? Do you think we ought to set the scene all over again? Yes. <laughs> Life boy, well, for goodness sake, I certainly have. I've never without a cake under each little arm. <laughs> well, isn't that a pity? It's all pity, yes. Uh, well, let's see what we can do for you, nurse. Ready, doctor, honey. You ready? Mm-hmm. Sponge. Sponge. Soap. Soap. Drano. Drano. <laughs> Steel wool. Steel wool. Bathtub. Bathtub. <laughs> oh, oh, you threw me in the water. And now, oh. now, nurse, if you'll excuse us a moment. Oh, all right. And now, Stinky, take off your clothes. Do- Dr. Kaiser, uh, if you lay one finger on me, I- I- I'll bite it off. And, and, and uh, uh, not only that, I'll fly into a big tizzy. And I'll, I'll, I'll pound my fist on your puny little chest. And I'll, I'll, I'll reach way down and swing from the floor. And I'll, I'll, oh, I'll just give you a big pinch. Congratulations, Mr. Twing. I see that with the gentle Lux care, you keep your dainty intimate things fresh up to three times as long. <laughs> and now first, we'll use the dream on you. The dream on me? Yes, that's the gloriously new different dream. A miracle shampoo adored by shining Hollywood stars like Merle Oberon. Oh, goody, goody, big fat gumdrop. <laughs> And now I'll pour cologne on you. One bucket is enough. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, it's cold. And a teensy touch of fragrant bath salts. Oh, about four pounds. Oh, not so hard. <laughs> and, per- and perfume. Listerine. Yeah. Toilet water. Yeah. Sin Sin. Oh, Oh, Mr. Twain. Oh, now. Oh, you smell. You're just like a garden of roses. Oh, gosh. Oh, doctor, honey, darling, Lanny Pie. Yes, nurse. Are you ready to make love to me now? Oh. Oh, but wait. I have something to say to Mr. Twain. You have, friend? What is this? Yes, Nick. Oh, stop. Wonderful 
Dr. Inkay. And now here's Eileen Woods with another song. I'm always chasing rainbows. From the latest Kay Kaiser picture, I'm always chasing. <laughs> Eileen? closing time once more. Yeah, fellas, it's time to draw the curtain down on this edition of Command, and time to say thanks for inviting us in. Those thanks come from Marsha Hunt, Kay the Kaiser, Pat Patrick, who plays the inimitable Ursel Twing, Eileen Woods, Ishka Bibble, the crew chief, and the very capable High Aberback. And gang, wherever you are, remember that freedom train may be pulling into your hometown right now. Let's not forget the precious documents on board that train or what they stand for, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, all of them. And let's keep that freedom train chugging right along. That's right, Kay. Well, this is Marcia saying good night, gang. And so long, everybody. (laughs) 